Welcome back to the channel guys. An interesting device has turned up today. This. This is actually a Meshtastic node. It's like the size or thickness of, I don't know, like it reminds me of one of those kind of like um, garage door openers. But this is the new T1000E from a company called Seed Studio who have kind of been making lower WAN products for quite a while. So let's take a quick look at this because it's literally just turned up. I've turned it on um, and I've kind of set it all up, um, done the basic settings. But I'm just going to have a closer look in this video and just show you, you know, as it happens, as I'm kind of finding stuff out about this. But I mean, first impressions are that it's incredibly cool. You've got a battery in there. You've got the um, the chipset, which is actually an NRF52. Um, you've got this magnetic connector system here for charging and also programming. This is running firmware 2.4 as well out of the box. It came with 2.4 on it. Um, you've got this kind of like, uh, let's turn that around. You've got this kind of this keychain thing here, which you can use to obviously, you know, stick a lanyard on or or do all sorts of things. But apparently this is this is waterproof or water resistant. Um, IP69, I believe, which is, you know, not waterproof, but you know, shower proof and dust proof. Um, little piezo speaker here and a status LED here. Now you can also see this antenna up here, which is the LoRa antenna. Um, and believe it or not, this actually has GPS built in as well. I mean, how cool is that? So yeah, as I say, I've seen this device before marketed as a like a lower WAN helium tracker. Um, so it's just really cool to see that there's, you know, Meshtastic firmware now works on um, a device like this. So if you're wondering what that is there, that's the function button. Um, so you can basically just obviously double tap that to do a beacon. There's not really much else you can do um, with that particular button there because <laughs> obviously there's no screen so you, you're not going to cycle through menus or anything like that um, I mean it would be so cool if, for us guys if you could have a, a really really low profile uh, OLED screen in there that would be really neat wouldn't it but um, this one doesn't obviously have that currently this speaker is set up to beep when a message comes through so if I go on to my uh, Meshtastic app here and I just send it a message let's just do a quick direct message um, oh, I haven't actually done that yet so just send that out there and you hear it come through and it's just literally made that beep let's do that again there you go so it's pretty it's not like the old um, T deck where it started playing did it play like the A team theme tune or something like that so you might sort of think, well, this device, you know, with this internal antenna, that's not going to do much. It's not going to, you know, work that well. Um, you know, it's a PCB mounted antenna. It looks pretty good, like a sort of folded vertical type thing, really. Um, so I should imagine that, you know, it's going to work reasonably. The thing about LoRa is it doesn't need like an amazing antenna if you're in an area where there's, you know, fairly good coverage or, you know, just picking up nodes out and about. I will do some range tests with this, but um, I'm not going to rip this apart just yet <laughs> um, to test the power output of it. Um, but what I can do is just put this little meter here over the top of the, um, over the top of the antenna connector there and just, let's just have a look at that there. And then if I just double tap the beacon button here, we should see uh, a reading come on the actual display there. So I'll just do that now. One, two, there you go. It's showing like 10 milliwatts um, coupled to the antenna. So it's probably about, it's probably about right. It's probably kicking out, you know, a hundred or so milliwatts. Judging from what I've seen before where you kind of, you know, do this sort of, this kind of setup, um, you know, you, you, ne you never get like the full power coming across as a sort of an inductive, um, antenna type thing so it's like 15 milliwatts something like that so it's a good way to see that it is actually putting out a fairly decent amount of power um, if that was putting out a subpar amount of power it wouldn't even move that that meter at all so it's doing something I mean this could actually be really good up a hill like you could just stick that in a tree somewhere just hanging you know it's going to be so covert and that's going to run for quite a long time um, and I think these are like 35 dollars or something like that that's the initial price that I've I've seen on it, um, so it's not the end of the world, you know. Really, if it if it did get sort of stolen or taken or something like that, um, but other than that, it's just such a slim, lightweight 
kind of you know device it's going to run for ages because of that nrf um, chipset as well i did just test the gps on this just literally stuck it in the window and bearing in mind this has probably come from china and that was the last time it probably had a gps fix it took about five ten minutes something like that to actually get a, a gps fix in the window so i reckon that MediaTek chipset must get a fix fairly fast because otherwise that you know i've had gps units before take ages when they've come fresh in from from uh, from china land but you know but yeah pretty impressive again this is kind of you know heading towards more of a like end consumer product i've seen a couple of videos where they sort of you know have a um a bunch of bikers like you know out on mountain bikes and they just grab a load of these and just shove them in their pockets and then obviously you know if they go somewhere where there's no cell signal um coverage which is pretty much everywhere in the uk <laughs> no only joking but you know you could find yourself in positions where places where you know there isn't good coverage um especially like in other countries it could work quite well especially if you're out in a big group and they're really spread apart because obviously the mesh will come into play then and it will forward um packets across you know the the other the other nodes each node becomes part of the mesh if you're not familiar with this go check out some of the other mesh tastic videos that i've done on here but also that is a 700 milliamp hour battery as well and on an nrf 52 chipset if you're running this in in client mute that could run for like you know over a week probably that's also an ambient light sensor as well there's also an accelerometer and a temperature sensor as well in here as well so it's pretty it's pretty fully loaded so i'm looking at their website here as well um so yeah 35.91 dollars which is you know pretty reasonable i think um and obviously the device they're showing here isn't exactly the same one as i've got here it, it's in a different case so maybe that is more like the the sort of end consumer looking um device because obviously this one has got the sort of funky sort of frosted um kind of casing which i think is really good so i just want to have a look at this this is the connection lead that comes with it look it's a little magnetic um four pin we've seen these on the on the helltech wireless capsules as well um but that just basically just clicks only one way around it goes the right way around on that way when you get it the right way around it actually sort of snaps in so being as there's no reset button you normally hit the reset button twice on um nrf 52 devices to to put them into um like the the disk mode where you can just drag and drop the firmware with, with the computer but how do we get it into disk mode that's what i'm wondering because there's no reset button to sort of hit twice let's just plug it into the computer and see what see what happens the USB is plugged into the computer, so I'm just going to connect that. Um, we'll see what happens. Nothing's shown as a disk on the computer yet, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe on the Meshtastic flasher because I know there's this like DFU um, thing that you can do on here. So interesting enough, this does actually show on the yeah, our seed card tracker. If anyone's noticed that, um, so. I'm just going to do stable firmware there and then okay why is nothing happening okay so it took me a minute to work this out but basically basically what you've got to do here is just use this other one here this seed um wio wm1110 tracker which i've actually got a dev board they've sent me this but i've got some some strange issues with it at the moment so i'm not going to feature it in this video but anyway when you do that you see it allows you to hit this flash button and then hit enter dfu mode once you hit enter dfu mode you get this extra pop-up up the top which you're not seeing because my computer is just a bit stupid um but basically you can then choose the you can see the t1000 in a little dialog box basically you just hit that and then and then what you'll see now is that basically um, and then this allows you to basically just replace this file um, this current uf2 file here um, with the one that you can download from it's probably worth a proper tutorial on this but those of you with a bit of experience with metastatic stuff know what you've got to do um, you've just got to get this device into dfu mode which is easy to do um, if you just sort of follow those quick little steps yeah, so anyway, I didn't update the firmware on it because it's on 2.4 anyway. I'm going to leave it on 2.4. Incidentally, 2.4 firmware seems to be working quite well. Um, it's either 2.4 or one of the later 2.3s um, that you want to be using now. And it really does actually help messaging quite a, quite a lot. So I've shifted the, um, 
the messaging priority, I believe, um, on the on the network. So we've we've actually found it does actually work quite well. But you do need strong RSSIs to sort of give messaging the best chance. Um, anyway, but yeah, overall this looks pretty cool. I'm going to do lots more testing with it, um, and yeah, I might. I don't, I, don't, I don't really want to wreck this, but I feel like I want to crack this open and just see <laughs> what, um, what else is there. There's some pins there. Like, there's some like these kind of, I don't know if that's like a UR or I don't know what that is. But, but I think before I do that, I'm going to take this out and about with me um, and just see what see what the range is like. See what it performs like um, with that antenna in there. It's kind of cool to have something this small um, and this thin. Um Take note, Chris, from Zero Fox 3D, because I've always been saying you need to make stuff that's like super, super slim, because that's what I like. <laughs> anyway, guys. Anyway, this is the Siege Studio T1000E Mestastic version. Um, I think they're pre-ordering it now. I don't think it's actually available right now as we speak, but the link will be down below. So yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And I'll let you know how I'll get on. Catch you later.